exercise 410. Exercise 410. And this covers off a lot. Learning Objective 3, Learning Objective 4, Learning Objective 5, and Learning Objective 6. So we're really combining a lot here. So let's see what we have. Break even and target profit analysis. Super Sales Company is the exclusive distributor for a high quality knapsack. The product sells for $60 per unit. Let's make a note of that now, that our selling price is 60 bucks, and we'll call that 100%. Sells for 60 bucks a unit and has a contribution margin ratio of 40%. So our contribution margin ratio is 40%, which means our variable expense ratio must be 60%. So minus our variable cost, 60% of 60 bucks is 36, which means we must have a contribution margin per unit of $24. That's just the way the question is worded. The company's fixed expenses are $360,000 per year, so we have fixed costs equal to $360,000. All right. Company plans to sell 17,000 knapsacks this year, 17,000. Required, number one, what are the variable expenses per unit? The variable expenses per unit. Well, number one, we've already figured it out, 36 bucks. See what organizing your data can do? It can solve a lot of problems almost right away. So let's look at number two, use the equation method. So number two asks us to use the equation method, equation method to solve four things a b c and d so let's look at what a is asking us what is the break-even point in units and in sales dollars so we need to solve for q which is the amount of units and x which is the level of sales dollars so remember q is our selling our sales which is 60 q our selling price must equal our variable costs 36 q plus our fixed costs of 360,000. That's the formula for figuring out our break-even in quantity. So we'll get 24Q, and that 24 should equal our contribution margin per unit down here, and it does, equals to 360,000. Q is just the division of that. We will get 15,000 units. So there we go. There's the amount of units. Now it's asking us to figure out the sales dollars. We have two choices. We have two choices in doing this. We have the quantity of 15,000, so we can simply multiply our 15,000 by our 60 bucks. So if we multiply it by 60 bucks, we will get $900,000 in sales. Or we can use the equation method, which says x must equal, 100% x must equal 0.6x, which is our variable cost, plus $360,000. So that 0.4x must equal 360,000. So x equals 360 divided by 0.4, you'll find it's the same 900,000. So you have flexibility in this particular one. B. B says, what sales level in units and in sales dollars is required to earn an annual profit of $90,000? Well, it's the same equation, 60Q equals 36 Q plus 360 there's our break-even but we're asked to earn a profit of 90 so let's add another ninety thousand dollars on we'll still get to the same 24 Q but now it equals must equal 450 Q will equal eighteen thousand seven hundred and fifty <laughs> and we can multiply that by our $60 per nap stack, and we will get $1,125,000. We could also solve it by looking at this equation over here and replicating it, x equals 0.6x plus 360k plus the other 90k, and solving for x. So we can do it in one of two ways. C, what is C asking us? C is saying what level, what sales level in units is required to earn an annual after-tax profit of 90000 if your tax rate is 25%? Well, units, so we know we're dealing with Q and not X. 
So we'll still have 60Q equal to 36Q, there's our variable cost, plus our fixed cost of 360, plus we need an after-tax profit of 90,000. Well, we do the same thing. Basically, we just take the 90,000, we do the same thing as if it were the formula method, and we divide it by 1 minus the tax rate, which is 0.25. We're told the tax rate is 25%, correct? Yes, it is. So all we have to do is just simply solve for that. Well, we'll still have the same 24Q equal to, and if you multiply this out and you do the division and the addition, you'll get $480,000. So Q must equal 20,000 units. There we go. And if we need, if it, it doesn't ask for the price, but if we need to know the price, we know that we could just multiply it by our selling price of 60 bucks, and we'll get $1.2 million is what we need in sales. D. Assume that through negotiation with the manufacturer, Super Sales Company is able to reduce its variable expense by three bucks per unit. Well, we're at 36 right now, which means we'll be at 33. What is the company's new break-even point in units and sales dollars? So let's do the units first. The units we know we're dealing with Q. Our selling price stays the same at 60. So our sales, 60Q, must equal our variable costs plus our fixed costs. Well, our variable costs are not 36 anymore, they're 33. So it must equal 33Q plus our fixed costs, 360000 So that will give us 27Q equal to 360000 So Q will equal an odd number. You'll get a decimal point. Now, no matter what the decimal point is, always round up. Because if you round down, you'll be just maybe a few dollars below break even. Always round up. Even if it's... 10.003, you'd think, well, that's 10. Well, round up. Always round up to the, ne to the nearest one. So we're going to round this up to 13,334 instead of 33.33, 33 .33, which means we should have gone down to 33. But in this type of analysis, always round up. Now, that's how much we need. We also need it in sales. So we multiply it by our selling price of 60 bucks, and we will get $800,040. Now we round it up. That's why we got the extra 40 bucks here. If we didn't round up and we left this 13, 333.33 times the 60 bucks, this would have come to 800,000 even. But since we round it up by one, which is we rounded from 0.33 up, so we rounded up basically two thirds of a unit. If the selling price is 60 bucks, two thirds of 60 bucks is 40. There's the rounding error, right? So there's number two done. Number three, repeat number two using the formula method. All right, so number three, A. We need our break even in dollars and in units. So we know that our break-even, fixed costs over our contribution margin ratio, and our fixed costs over our contribution margin per unit. And our fixed costs are 360000 We have a 0.4 contribution margin ratio, which means we need $900,000 in sales, or $360,000 over our contribution margin per unit, which is $24, we'll need... 15,000 units. Does that make sense? Here we got 15,000 units and 900,000, 900,000. So they equal, right? B. B was what level of sales is required to earn an annual profit of 90,000? Sales and units. So it's just our fixed cost plus our target profit over our contribution margin ratio. And for units, it's our fixed cost, cost plus our target profit over our contribution margin per unit. So 360, and the profit that we want to make is 90,000 over 0.4, and that will give us a total of $1,125,000. And if we need it in units, again, we got the same 360 plus the 90,000 over $24. And that will give us 18,750 units. Well, does that make sense? Let's have a look here. Uh, in part B, we got 18,750, 18,750, 1,125, 1,125. We're getting the same answers. 
A, B, C. C is saying what sales level is required to earn after tax profit of 90,000? What sales level in units? And this is just asking us for units to, earn, uh, um, to get an after tax profit. So our fixed costs plus our net income, one minus the tax rate. It's not a target profit anymore. It's, it's an after tax target profit. And since it's in units that we're being asked, it's our contribution margin per unit. The U gives it away, right? So if we add the amounts at the top, we'll get $360,000 plus $90,000. And our tax rate is 25%, 1 minus 0.25 over 24. And if you solve for all the... Uh, uh, this is just arithmetic calculator work. I'm not going to do that. We'll get to 20,000 units. Does that make sense? Well, 20,000 here, 20,000 here. Now, if we multiply that by 60 bucks, which is what the selling price, we'll get it in dollars. Or we could do the whole formula again. It's up to you, but it's not being asked of us. So let's just go to D. Assume that through negotiation with the manufacturer, okay, we know this. This is the one where our variable expense drops by three bucks and we need to calculate our break even point. So if it drops by three bucks, what we have to do is we have to figure out what happens here. So let's do that uh, right now. We have $60. This is going to drop to 33. This will go to 27. If this is 100%, our contribution margin ratio went from 24 to 27, so it goes up by 5%, we actually have a 45% contribution margin, uh, and we have here a 55% variable expense ratio. So if you take 27 and you divide it by 60, you'll get 45. So we did have a contribution margin per unit of 24, which gave us a contribution margin ratio of 40%. Since our variable costs drop by 3, our contribution margin per unit goes up by 3, which goes from 24 to 27, which increases our contribution margin from 40% to 45%. So, to figure out our, say, our break-even, fixed cost divided by our contribution margin ratio will equal 360 divided by 0.45, 360 divided by 0.45, is eight hundred thousand dollars, which is we we got eight thousand eight hundred thousand and forty, but we rounded up by one. Remember, so let's do the units. Fixed cost over contribution margin per unit is the same three hundred and sixty thousand, but now we don't have twenty four, we have twenty seven. So we divide that by twenty seven, we will get thirteen thousand three hundred and thirty three point three three. Always round up. So we'll round it up to 1334, 1334, 800, 800. There we go. It's a crowded screen, but you're going to want to watch this one full screen, I think. But there is question 410. We covered a lot of ground. We used both the equation method and the formula method. I find the formula method gets right to the point. The equation method's the long way around, but you should be comfortable using both methods.